Hey, what's going on you guys? Thanks for clicking on this video. I went ahead today and made a banana nut bread using no bananas, totally keto style. So this is how it turned out. This is only a half a serving. I will go ahead and list the macros for the original, which is a sour cream coffee cake that I adapted this recipe from. That was floating around on Facebook and Pinterest for quite some time. Sorry, I'm drooling. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a try because I have to try it for you guys. Mm-hmm. With butter on it. There's really no better way to have that. I hope you guys enjoy this recipe video. If you do, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And I'll see you in my next video. Mwah. Bye. Hey, you guys. This is also a little honest review video. This company called Boxy Kitchen, Boxy Key Kitchen, they contacted me and sent me this three-piece silicone baking set. And I really, really, really liked it. They're really flexible. They can go in the freezer. And the handle is steel. And it cools off really quickly. They sent me three pieces, these three. And I'm going to be using this big square one for my loaf today. But they're really nice quality, thick silicone. They cool really quick. It doesn't stick. They're really super easy to clean. And anyways, there's a link down below if you guys want to check it out. It's on Amazon. And there's a coupon code for YouTube T to get 50% off. And there's more details down below. So let's get started. We preheated our oven to 325. And here's two cups of almond flour. And we are going to be putting in a third of a cup of coconut flour. Just mixing all of our dry ingredients together first. And then we're taking a third of a cup of protein powder. This here is chocolate, um, chocolate milkshake Quest protein powder. I'm just going to use this because I didn't want to go buy any different protein powder and it still tasted awesome. It didn't taste like chocolate banana bread or anything like that because there's not enough chocolate. But we're also going to add one tablespoon of baking powder and a half a teaspoon of pink Himalayan sea salt. And give this a whisk. You want to incorporate all of these dry ingredients really, really, really well so everything gets mixed nice and evenly. Okay, now we're going to set that aside. Okay, now in a bigger bowl we're going to put our softened butter. This is a half a cup or eight tablespoons or whatever you want to call it. And we are going to attempt to get this in the bowl. We're going to try really hard and eventually get it in there, I'm sure. There we go. And we're going to add sour cream in a second. We're going to make this a little bit softer. So that way our sour cream will mix in nice and evenly. So we're going to take that half a cup of sour cream and now we're going to add that in and mix this really well with the whisk until it's nice and smooth and creamy. Just like that. And now we're going to take our Truvia. This is what I use. I like Truvia. You can use Swerve or whatever you prefer. We're going to do three quarters of a cup of Truvia. Add that in. Mix it up really nicely. And then one at a time, we're going to add four eggs, and these are room temperature eggs. So I had them sitting on my counter for a good couple hours before I even started uh, mixing them in. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so beat those in one at a time. And I really should have done this in a bigger bowl, but yeah, I didn't think that far ahead. Okay, now we're going to do two teaspoons of banana extract, with banana flavor, and then one teaspoon of vanilla extract, and mix this up vigorously, and then finally decide to put it in a bigger bowl. So what's one more dish, right? Okay, now we're going to add our dry ingredients in three parts, four parts, whatever you want to do. <clears throat> I just do it this way so it's easier to incorporate, as you can see, it it blends really smoothly and then it gets a little bit thicker so we're going to keep adding it in a little bit at a time and then switch to a spatula because that's way easier yeah, good idea. there we go scrape the sides mix it in give it a little taste and see that it did not taste enough like banana so i decided to make the decision to just dump the rest of my extract in there so it rounded up about to one tablespoon of the banana extract because I want it to taste like banana. So at this point it tastes good enough. Now we're gonna do our three quarters of a cup of walnuts. I saved a little bit so I could put them on the top. So save a little, maybe a couple tablespoons for the top. 
fold those in and use our awesome little pan. I sprayed it anyways just because I wanted to be safe and I honestly don't think it needed it at all because this bakeware is freaking awesome you guys. The silicone is it's really flexible but it's really sturdy. It's not those really cheap ones that you would find you know other places because it's really thick really durable and it actually held it up really nicely. It does kind of cave in a little bit. You're gonna need something underneath it if you're transferring something that's you know gonna break, but see, it kind of gives a little bit, but trust me, it's really good quality. So we're going to bake this. Covered with tin foil for 10 minutes, then you're gonna take off the tin foil and bake it for another 30 to 40 minutes until the toothpick comes out clean. So depending on your oven. And then I left mine sitting on my counter for a good hour or two hours because I left and came back home and I was amazed to see how it just popped right out of this pan, you guys. Look at this. I was amazed. If you would have seen my face, I was like, what? How did it do that? So I was really excited. I just kind of turned it over onto my little plastic sheet thing I got from the dollar, the dollar store. And I was like amazed. Look at that. It came out clean. So clean. Excited. And just gave it a cut. I cut this into 12 servings. They're really big servings, so this is basically like a breakfast or a lunch item or a snack if you know you guys don't eat big meals, but look at that. Who needs Starbucks? You can do this and it's keto friendly. And if you guys wanna see how I wrap it, here we go. This way I can wrap them individually, keep them in the freezer, and then I can pull one out at a time, pop it in the microwave if I want, or just eat it cold because it's really good cold. And I store them in a freezer bag wrapped in this um, wax paper and I just tape it up and I would say it's store a couple weeks I doubt you're gonna have them longer than that I would you can probably store them way longer than that maybe like a month or two but I hope you like this video you guys thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one Bomb.